back with part two. Uh, again, I'm Mike Casper. I'm the lead welding instructor and co-founder of MTI DTC. Um, we talked about our flat position. So what's, what's nice, or I guess nice for an instructor, is this, is a, this was our flat bead that we did in the last series, okay? You notice the width of it and the, the, the consistency of it. Once I understand that in the flat position, it's gonna, I'm, I'm aiming for a bead that looks exactly like this in the horizontal position, the vertical up position, and overhead. So it's real simple to, to show a, a, or, or have a guy in your class say, hey, is this okay? Absolutely, if it looks like that. If it doesn't look like that, then we need to work on it still. So I went, I went from a one position, which is flat, to a three position up because horizontal is, is pretty much the same heat and, and all we're doing when we change positions, vertical takes the least amount of heat. I know some people say, I can weld it all in the same heat, so can I. But for, for a beginner, I like to turn the heat down, have them turn the heat down just a little bit because it penetrates a little more as we start from the bottom to the top, okay? So with, with the penetration that's there, it, it's gonna dig a little bit. So we, we wanna try to, to control that penetration a little bit by bumping the heat down. So we went from 90, 95, we're gonna go from 85 to 90. So we're gonna bump down in the five amp range. So it's not, we're not going from 90 to 70 because we're switched positions. In my opinion, this would be the only time that I would make an amperage adjustment with this rod. I could weld in the flat, horizontal, overhead positions with the same heat. Vertical up takes a little less heat, especially as you progress across here and get some heat built up in this plate, okay? All the positions, flat, we were over the top of it. That's the way we're gonna do here. So from the sideways, all I'm doing is combating gravity just a little bit. I've got my rod pointed up in this case, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be up about 10 degrees. What am I doing? I'm watching the puddle. What's my arc length? The same as it was in flat. The only thing I'm adjusting right now is my, my direction of travel angle, okay? And my heat. That's all I've done different. A lot of people will tell you that you have to rotate this rod or swirl this rod to get this, to get this ripples in here. That, uh, that occurs naturally, okay? This rod, you can move it, and I will explain that in, in this series, but for the most part, we're not trying to move it to create this, this ripple effect. That happens naturally. And I tell guys, you know, when they're talking to me, it'd be like me flapping my arm right here while you talk. It's really not doing anything. I'm flapping my arm. So the guys that take this rod and they try to swirl it to make this, it's an un unnecessary motion, okay? So when I do vertical, I've got a, a, a 10 degree up and I'm just combating gravity when I do that and I'm just cruising straight up, okay? That's all I'm doing. I've turned the heat down, that's it. I'm, uh, there's no other magic formula other than watch that puddle, okay? All right, so I've got this off the, off the uh, table a little bit. That's just for my own comfort. And we got us a little bit of an angle going up like we talked about. It's gonna be a little awkward for me because I'm kind of riding my hands on the bottom of this table to start with and then I'll come off the table. So it's, uh, it's just the way it has to be. I'm gonna strike my arc and we'll go straight up. So you'll see, you'll see that over my shoulder here. So again, I've turned down. Everything else is pretty much the same. Here we go.
All right, went all the way to the top this time. So look where we ended up. Just about the same amount of rod. So what's that tell you is, is we got about the same bead. Uh, bead width, size, shape, all that good stuff. So weld from the bottom to the top. We do not weld. This rod is not designed to weld from the top down. And you can do it, but it's not gonna penetrate. It's actually gonna lay on top and very dangerous situation if you're putting something together that needs to hold some weight. So anyway, there's our vertical up. And I have a, a natural swag to me as far as moving. So I'm not trying to be surgically uh, just rock solid rigid, okay? That's where you kind of get in trouble. This rod, it, it's okay to float around a little bit. Now I'm not purposely doing that, but I'm also not holding my breath and being like a stone figure trying to hold it steady. I've, I've got a natural, just a natural motion to me. And I can breathe and I can see everything. So. On this camera angle here, you can see how close together these welds are, twofold. That's how we're gonna cap something with stringer beads uh, in this position. And also, it saves material. So it's pretty, it's, it's twofold in our situation, okay? I'll do a little polishing of it. And you can see it's very similar to the flat. So yeah, we're good. We got our rod angle. We've got our comfortability down. I didn't have to stop in the middle and move my elbow and all that good stuff. Our machine set, although it's a little on the cold side, I probably probably could have got away with not adjusting it, but if I weld three or four more beads in this position, I would have to turn down or go cool the steel. So uh, I turned down a little bit and it was a little slow poke Rodriguez going up there, but I'm okay with that. So anyway, that's a vertical weld. Overhead, horizontal, flat, it's, it's all just about watching that puddle. And once you understand what that puddle's doing, sky's the limit. You're gonna, you're gonna fly through stick welding because you understand what you're looking at, okay? So again, vertical up, vertical down, no, no. They make rods designed to go downhill, thin material, all that good stuff. There's a lot of factors that go into being able to weld downhill. Um, we don't show it here. And again, uh, you weld downhill with this rod on a, on a construction site and you're probably going to be asked to leave because it's just a no-no. It's not something that is practiced. Okay? All right, so that'll do it for the stick. You know, 7018, get your angles right, get your heat right, and get your arc length and your travel speed down, and the sky's the limit. You're going you're gonna to be successful. Okay? Um, you know, Wear your PPE. Don't don't try to be a maverick. Weld one-handed. Don't don't get your face over there when you're chipping, and uh, all, all should be good. Okay. I hope that uh, I hope that gets a little insight into stick welding. Uh, I know some people are kind of scared of it just because it's a bright light. There's sparks, but it's all controlled. You know, it's all controlled. It's it's up to you. If I were to turn this machine up to too hot, it would start putting a lot of spatter out. I would see a lot of sparks and stuff come at me. If it was too cold, the rod would stick and not, and not weld right. So part of being able to strike that rod and get going is setting that heat correctly, okay? Um, online, all kinds of online avenues and resources to, to tell you, hey, what amperage should a 332 7018 be ran at? I'm sure you would have 25 answers in three seconds. So uh, really not a lot of questions anymore, just a lot of answers off the internet. So anyway, I hope that helps and we'll see you uh, uh, in the next series. Thank you.